once again because I didn't have the time to say hello this morning. So I, I want you to, to congratulate and to, to send my biggest greetings for coming for your coming to Lithuania and for participating in this uh, in seminar and conference of the project Cube. Uh, and at the same time to present uh, our organization and our activities, what we are doing uh, in ICT implementation and ICT usage in, uh, in educational processes. Uh, so uh, our organization is uh, uh, ITECO, it's High Technologies for Cooperation, and we mainly focusing on the ICT and uh, any technologies related uh, to education which can be used in the proper or innovative way. So what I want to present today is that there are two projects and two programs that we are doing at the present time. And to show some, uh, <coughs> some working processes, because uh, uh, those projects are not finished yet. So you can see just uh, our expectations and also some uh, interim, and then interim results. And probably, to answer some of your questions and probably to, to raise other, other questions to discuss afterwards. So, I'm Vilma Bukuta, I'm the project coordinator working in the uh, Institute of Mobile Techno Technologies for Education and Culture. And we have also the branch uh, um, uh, division, which is uh, called HITECO, what I already told and which is focusing mainly on technologies and programming and uh, developments in the city. Uh, we are working more than um, 10 years in, uh, in lifelong le learning programs and uh, mainly again related to ICT projects and again mainly to innovative approaches and methods in school and educational organizations, how those technologies can be used in proper way. Uh, I will not talk about all the projects because it would be probably too boring and uh, <coughs> not related to, to this particular Q, uh, seminar and conference, but uh, I would like just to present uh, some of them and to show uh, some uh, ideas how it can be used and probably uh, something could be useful for, for you at your work and your organizations. So uh, one project that I want to, to start uh, this is VIPI, Virtual Portal for Empired Group Interaction. And as I already heard in pre previous presentations, there are many different ways where the technologies appear in education, many different ways where the organizations try to use them in the lower, lower level or higher level. And the, the, mm, this usage is also depends, of course, on the internal environment or the external environment, on support from government. And, Etc. Etc. So there are a lot of uh, many many reasons for that. Uh, in, in this project, what we what we started in 2011 in January, <coughs> we focused on some specific group, so with, on people with disabilities and their possibility to, to give them proper education, education with uh, improving these these skills using ICT in very modern and innovative. So, as I told, we started uh, last year from January. Uh, the project should continue for three years, so we're in the middle. Actually, just this week is the interim report where we have to submit interim results. And it will finish in 2013 in December. Target groups, what we have, there are people with disabilities. So, it's already giving some structure of our work and it's already giving some uh, limitations or, or records how we should work on them. And uh, uh, some details just about the pro program and project is European also lifelong learning program project, but it's key activity three, which is related only to ICT. So it's mainly focusing to ICT. And uh, as a key activity, it's cross uh, uh, transparent uh, program which covers not only one sector like secondary education, but it also covers uh, or adult education or professional education. So in our project we have also focused on professional education because the people with disabilities, they, they are not, uh, we are not only targeting to give them a possibility to, to learn and to, to get uh, access to, to teaching and to learn 
but also to have them in better possibilities to be employed and to have a sustainable life as a normal people. Uh, short information about our partnership, there are <coughs> coordinators, two coordinators from, one is from United Kingdom, it's a Nottingham Trent University uh, ICT department and uh, Phoenix from Belgium, which is our official coordinator for all administrative work and all the communication and, uh, and processes monitoring. So, and then we have two partners from Greece, <coughs> we as a partner and also one partner from Cyprus, which is also a private company, but they are very technology advanced and, very, and giving some very interesting uh, contribution to this project, which I will tell you a bit later. So telling the prehistory, pre why this project appeared and why we need it, <coughs> it came from the, our situation, what we have in Europe. And this statistic shows that 45 million people in Europe have a long stand, standing health problems or disability. So, um, and this is just an average. If you look at country by country, of course the, the numbers will be quite different. In some countries there are more possibilities and some countries the, the level is uh, different because of the different um, criteria how the people are um, assessed and uh, are placed to one or another disability level. <coughs> what is very important for us and for, for work what we are doing that only 33% of those people are not restricted in the kind or amount of work they could do or their mobility to, to, to go and uh, come back from work. So uh, only one third of the people who have some kind of disability <coughs> can be uh, can fully be employed or can can work as a as a ordinary people without any support or accessibility help. And uh, also, again, those numbers uh, those uh, those numbers differ in the European Union from 10 to 50 percent. But we are, when we are talking about the average, is quite high numbers and these striking numbers which have to be addressed in many activities. And so and only this third which could work and which have all the flexibility and mobility to work, from those only 68% are employed. So if we consider in the real numbers how many people have have it, which having some kind of disability, not don't have any work and don't have any possibility to be employed. So this is another uh, very uh, serious signal that something has to be done for those people too. And so uh, about the, it's why the project was uh, funded, of course, uh, from European Commission, because this statistic which shows from one side that we have really uh, reality which uh, needs for help and needs for some assessment. Uh, that arises the, the idea of this project and that was when it was written. And what we choose, we choose ICT. ICT as, uh, which provides alternative and creative solutions for the employment of people with disabilities. So to use the ICT as a tool to help those people. And uh, what, the, what we choose, because of course like talking about ICT it can be also a lot, a lot of, of things and many, the big variety. But what we choose that uh, to help the people not to give just a, re a job and to, to, to give them something very strict and very concrete, but to give them a competences and to focus on digital competences. As, of course, because they are in the list of the Lisbon objectives as, as one of the key competences and also because of uh, recent studies which show that People, uh, when they, especially disabled people with disabilities, when they are looking for a job, one of the main, uh, one of the limited uh, reasons are that they are not, they, they don't have um, sufficient ICT competences. So this is that was our focus in the project to focus and to dedicate project for digital competences, where the people with disabilities could learn and could study independently and in an accessible way. <coughs> so, it's why the project arrived and the VP project envisages to fulfill that gap, making available accessible and flexible training, 
design to be adopted, design that will be adopted directly to people with disability, and uh, to disseminate or to spread this uh, material and these uh, training courses through centers providing special education and vocational training. So uh, we are in the middle of the project. I just can't tell the numbers that, for example, only the program consists of 200 pages and now we are working on the units for content, curriculum, for the content according to that curriculum but we prepared and each unit goes also about 200 pages, just material. But it's not the end, it's not the, the, the final result of what we, we want to, to approach and what we want to reach in that project. The main aims of the projects are one-stop shop, that's in the in commons. It means to have interactive portal and learning environment which will be accessible online on personal computers and via Android mobile phones or some supportive also mobile phones. Android is uh, chosen because it's the most prominent at the present time. Uh, which could deliver a multilingual platform means that all the information and material will be translated to all project partner languages, English, Dutch, Greek and Lithuanian, uh, with embedded social community, communication like everyone knows uh, Facebook or Twitter or some, something, some social communication platforms, but to have some kind of, of uh, social community which would be VP community, focusing on educating people with disabilities, of helping the people with disabilities, how to learn better. And, to, and for the people with disabilities to be a, a part of community and to participate in the progress. The same in the content development, the same in the teaching and learning process. And, uh, so, and to have, so uh, go, going to technology part, to, to have accessible online ICT for learning environment for people with disabilities and their trainers. Uh, the numbers DCAG. To the, there are standards for uh, accessibility online, which is uh, European accessibility standards. And uh, if you're preparing or you're developing a website or you're preparing any digital um, online material, normally professionals are always checking if it's comparable with the accessibility criteria. So what the project is approaching, the first is that to have a very high uh, quality material which would be, would be accessible to the people with, it, with the disabilities. And uh, with, to have an interacting and vast repository of interoperable uh, learning objects. Again, SCOM, it means uh, also accessibility, some criteria which is applied in the European Union. But what is um, very interesting, and I think what uh, uh, Yolanta showed in her presentation, what, the, what is done already at the governmental level, that the repository of the learning objects is very, very important. It's not enough to show to, the, to, to teachers and educators on the training program or curriculum what has to be done or how it can be done, but to have very, very compatible material and content which could be used directly online not going to some centers or just, or just taking what you need and what you need. So what is, that is also included in our, <coughs> in our project. And what is very advanced, in my opinion, I don't know, maybe you have, I, I'm sure that you have a lot of experience and you have a lot of examples from different programs and, and your personal work, that uh, um, all this uh, platform will be supported by Web 2.0 social services, which is not new already. It's everyone knows who, what is Facebook and similar uh, a similar platform, but also Web 3.0 <coughs> for semantically enriched content. Talking about semantic content, it's uh, I think it's very important because in this uh, in the present time when we have so many information and this information is overlooking from all corners of, of our life. Uh, to have semantic, uh, semantically enriched content means to have a very intelligent, intelligent tool which don't need to ask you twice or three times what kind of teacher you are, what kind of material you need, what, kind, what age is your target group. But if you once mention it, that you're looking for, or if you once 
type of, that you're looking for material for maths or that you are, um, you, your students are from 17 to 25. So this, those records, they stay inside of the system. And second time when you go, it opens immediately only that part which was connected to those hints which were already connected, were typed and in, recorded previously. So this metadata which is normally used in the, in the platforms and the, what they already mentioned and what you saw in previous presentations, that can be, do, it can be done intuitively. So what we call uh, Web 3.0 um, services. When the computer and the platform itself already intelligently knows that this person which comes and registers this name, Vilma or, or, or another name, the hints what he, he typed or she typed once, they are recorded to that person as metadata for the second, third and next time. So this is what we consider in, in our project also a very, very important part. And uh, this uh, would, uh, should help to people who are not so much advanced in the internet and who can be lost immediately uh, in, the, in that uh, amount of information to navigate in easy and very intuitive way because, because the, the technologies are intelligent as itself. And uh, what is uh, also very important, because also, <laughs> as I think it, I'm continuing with the blended learning from the, from the present, from previous presentation, that uh, we are not going to, to, to focus only on technologies, because technologies are very good, and they have, of course, to have, they have to be very professional, and they have to be as much advanced as possible, because um, that is the real need for people. We're not going to, to create technologies to, to be the, the best advanced civilization, but we are going to create the best technologies to help other people. So this, why there are a, another part in this project that to bring together key stakeholders and gatekeepers from vocational education, training centers, target groups and umbrella organizations. So we have a, a huge work in this project to be done and which is checked and monitored uh, every three months what we already done to connect and to create a network of, or to invoke a network of organizations who are related to people with disabilities in teaching process. And to have this access to spread a VP project, the prepared content and materials and all the information which can be used for them. So, the, what we expect in this project, the results, to, to have state-of-art analysis on ICT skills, uh, um, for people, uh, uh, skills for learning objects for people with disabilities. This study is already done, so you will, you will have on, on your presentation a web address where you can find all the uh, study with the PowerPoint presentation and diagrams and showing how the people reacted and there were a lot of respondents around of Europe. And uh, to have comparative analysis on finding uh, from UK, Lithuania, Greece and Cyprus, which are already as I told, the review is done. And uh, to prepare culturally adapted curriculum on ICT skills, <coughs> tailored to individual user needs. So, uh, for, in my opinion, this is the most difficult part because now we are preparing this material and there are a lot, a lot of material. But this material cannot be too complicated because we are talking about people with some kind of disabilities. But at the same time, we have to give enough information and enough material to get them uh, skills that they want to obtain in ICT. And uh, so, to have multilingual training material in alternative forums. Uh, I think I will talk, just there will be another slide where we talk about alternative formats. And to prepare trainer handbook and fully accessible online DB platform. And what is, uh, I think, in this project very tricky and very triggering that this project focusing on serious games for desktop and mobile usage. So all the material and everything what I told about the very complicated and challenging goals and aims of this project, they are going to be delivered through games for adults. Serious games, what is told in English, this term is very popular and in we still don't have any <coughs> relevant uh, term, but I think someone will find it. 
and they also a mo mobile interface which also is very um, flexible to use at any place and any, any, any moment and, and people with disabilities they normally are very highly uh, very highly use it. they are users in very high uh, level of those technologies and to organize local training workshops of course when we have the, all the all the materials. So uh, this is the information where you can find more about the project. Uh, there are um, contacts uh, also on Twitter. And uh, to get just uh, 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 a little spirit of this project when I told about the games, I want to show just one example of the game. I hope it will it will I have to do something. So just to show just a, some kind of spirit. Ah, okay. Sorry, just because I will open in English. Uh, just to, to get the impression what when I talked about social <coughs> games for, for people with disability. So one of the of the kind uh, of one of um, of of uh, area where the, where the where the material was prepared that um, people who are who are long long time not employed and they have a long time non-employment uh, uh, experience, actually they have to learn a lot of uh, different things, not only from professional skills, how to work and how to, uh, how to behave in the work, but also to manage their time and to be to prepared to go for work. So this game is just one of the game showing and uh, helping to, to get familiar, uh, familiar how, to, how to dress, how to plan your time in the morning, to be ready for work and to appear in work on time and in proper shape. So uh, this game is also prepared for for for, people, for deaf people. So there is also language uh, sign language uh, uh, possibility to use. But in this um, in, uh, in this case, I just go through just to show shortly how this game works. So do you type the name? I choose the gender and you put how much time you have in the morning to wake up, how much you will have, when you wake up and how much uh, time you allocate for yourself for morning preparation. And uh, looking at this summary, then you go for the job, uh, for, the, for the game just to, just to uh, practice. So we allocated 40 minutes and uh, there are three criteria which appear for people. Appearance, so how they are dressed, uh, hygiene, hygiene, uh, and alter uh, alertness. So if it's sleepy or not sleepy. And the, what the game, how the game works? So there is a bathroom. Get dressed. Everything, every time when you touch some items in the room, they say in the in the in the voice because as I told the the, the game can be used also with some visual environments. <coughs> and uh, it, it, the user, the, the, the player have to choose how to, in which order, to do some activities what normally people do when they go into job. So, which seems very simple for people who, are, who don't have any disabilities and who have blood, but not always so easy for people who, who never worked and who have to, to know how much time it takes in the morning to prepare themselves. So, Brush your hair. Uh, and there you see that there is uh, the, some activities, tasks, and also minutes, how much time the, it goes. So, uh, what is uh, mm, this alternate picture shows how the situation goes with, uh, with the tasks that have to be done. So, we, if we can dress and uh, put uh, some perfume and uh, we'll do something, so it doesn't mean that we, that we did everything good. Actually, there was some problem with the game because there, at the beginning there wasn't limitation, and somebody tried and went through the door without dresses. But then the programmers choose that not to do this mistake. So, what it should be proper order? Of course, there should be bathroom at the beginning, and not to to to, to dress and everything. So, if you start at the beginning, uh, have a shower. So, if you took it in the proper way, then you start the game because. If you did it in the wrong order, so it means that the time passed, but you have to do once again. Brush your teeth. So, then there are for, especially for men, to shave. And... Wash your hands. So, Go to the toilet. 
and all the activities, so you see the eyes are open at the <coughs> and uh, so then you have to go again to dress because after shower. Get dressed. And again, and so then you see the, what the situation goes, that you are already late for work. And you see that 40 minutes, which seems very uh, normal in the morning, actually they didn't work because you were sleepy, you went to dress, then you decided maybe to go to shower afterwards. And there is another one, last room, there's a kitchen. And they actually, there should be also some breakfast. So, and this order, actually very simple game, nothing special, but it's quite funny to follow and to check, even for, 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 for simple, every person to check how much time you spend. And, uh, you look great today. I am very impressed with your efforts. And of course, there is no any judgment. You, <laughs> we thank for the efforts, even the person maybe didn't do everything in very proper order. But at the end you see the result. Result, how, was, uh, how many tasks were done, done and how many tasks were forget, uh, forgotten. So drink a coffee or to drink some juice in the morning. And then you show that it's seven, seven minutes late. So maybe if you started this job and you was employed and employed for a long time, maybe to start in the morning to wake up one hour earlier, not 40 minutes. Then when the person used to that uh, rhythm, so then they can st to, to, to get uh, less time for the same activities. So this kind of the games, uh, and mainly the, all of them are flash games. They were prepared for people and they were tested in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in partner countries. Because this, this project came from the... Um, um, came from the previous our projects, it's not the, the first project with the, with the games. And uh, they proved that they are successful for attractiveness. And why we choose the serious games? We choose because they are attractive for people. The way how, where they put the content is attractive. So the only challenge that the professionals, programmers and, uh, and the educators, they have to put properly content in, in the proper way. And there is also a lot, a lot of uh, criteria to do this in proper way and, and, and uh, other things. There is also maybe I can show very shortly just uh, one small. Welcome to Chief Factory. To get stuck or need instruction, click the help button at the top of the screen. There are game just to 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 learn some general uh, mathematical skills. Also for the people who are not very familiar. With the education and the who were employed and some problems. So this is quite based as a Tetris, this game, but it also shows very simple figures and the person have to manipulate to, to do it properly. So that another and maybe I found another one. And another one I will show what we did on mobile phone. So the game was great, I hope it will open. It should open. And uh, so but I show on the computer because it's it's made uh, on flash. So there is no problem also to, to open it in uh, in uh, it's not problem to open in the computer desk uh, screen and to sh to see how this this Mi Mobile game it was also created to, um, to be used on mobile phones just to, just to practice of some skills like uh, for going to work, to prepare a sandwich uh, for in the evening, to prepare your clothes in the evening and to, to do some, some, something. And, or, and there are four sections uh, before leaving, for example, that game, that what you have to do before leaving for job. Uh, don't forget the keys, don't forget uh, to go to the toilet, don't forget to take some um, lunch in, and something. And it goes again for some, some simple game structure just to, to improve the, to memorize what you have to do in the morning, not to forget to, to take a, um, a bus ticket if you have the sun on a, the, or to take the glasses if you. If, if you if, if your glasses are, uh, if you're wearing glasses, and so and so, and so these small those games, which are seems uh, which seems very simple, really for, for even for children, but for people with disabilities and for, especially for cognitive disabilities or learning disabilities, uh, difficulties, so they are really not so easy as it seems to us.
and to have them in very attractive way just on their mobiles where they can practice and just to, to play those games. They memorize them, not maybe not directly but indirectly and then they can use it in the proper way in their daily life. So this, that is the idea of the project. I'm very tired. <laughs> Yeah. Because I understand that you had adults as participants. Yes, we had it from 18 years old. But because there are people with disabilities, and especially with uh, mental disabilities, if they are with mental disabilities... There were some deaf people, because there was sign language. Yeah, the deaf people, there, so, because there are four countries, four or five countries in the project. So, for example, we focused in Lithuania with the deaf people. And English people also, the English partners, uh, British partners also, they have deaf uh, training center, but also the learning, dif dis dis learning difficulty, the people who have learning difficulties. And in other countries, they also have this learning or mental difficulties. I'm asking because at the, now at the University of Warsaw, we have a research project with deaf people, and it's very difficult for us to find other, simple to find skills just go to schools mm -hmm. and that deaf kids. It's very difficult to find adults. Some of them are, are participants in yeah, associations, yeah. but most of them are very difficult to find. So how did you reach your participants? Yeah. So it's, uh -huh. yes, uh, thank you for the question. What I told that is one of the one of the big um, one of the big um, activities, I mean it's uh, uh, highlighted in the project to bring together key stakeholders and gatekeepers. Gatekeepers, we, 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 we consider all governmental organizations, like education ministry, organizations could belong to education ministry, etc., etc. But uh, there, also st there are uh, stakeholders, and stakeholders, there are normally communities of the people with disabilities. We have community of physical disability people community of the families with the uh, mental disability people and we go directly to them in the, in the associations, we present the project, we show the games, we discuss what kind of games would be suitable for them and then we try to involve them as experts and also participate in some project meetings and to give their opinion. And they, they are considered the main, the main uh, successful factor for the project. Yeah. But for example in Cyprus, uh, they have different uh, experience. They, for example, they, they invited from all those organizations and they thought we will pay you something, some fee, that you will attend our training course and that you will spread information. So they choose that, uh, uh, that uh, approach that to pay them a bit and to get them award. And we have a steering board that is, uh, which, which are not our project partner, but actually the external experts from those organizations.